Hello and welcome to another video and good afternoon from Istanbul's new airport here in the Turkish capital. Over my shoulder you can see an Airbus A350-900 of Turkish Airlines and we're flying a business class that Turkish Airlines doesn't want to talk about. Let's go and enjoy the video. Istanbul Airport is the latest pretender to being a global mega hub airport. It's the hub of Turkish Airlines, which flies to over 120 countries, more than any other airline, and in total the airline serves more destinations non-stop from here than any airline at any other airport in the world. It does seem really weird to be back in Istanbul after four years. This Rewind. I actually passed through here in early 2019, in the first weeks of soft launch, when it handled just a few flights a day. And wow, was it a ghost town. Istanbul is one of my favorite places for a layover, but I sadly had no time to reacquaint myself with this wonderful city, because I wanted to check something out which wasn't open the last time I was here. So I'm at the Yotel here in Istanbul Airport, and that is a big sort of freestanding building actually within the airport itself. It's not on the airport complex somewhere outside, it's actually right here in the terminal, and it's in the international transit zone. So let's check out what you get in the Istanbul Airport Transit Hotel. I've stayed in Yotels in several locations now, but this one seems very big. This is a premium plus king room, and it's huge. It has just about everything you'd need on a long layover. A do not disturb function, which is really useful if you're sleeping in the day. A nice big shower, which comes with toiletries and towels, and a separate lavatory. There's also a heated towel rail, which is a pretty nice facility to have in an airside hotel. This room definitely feels at the same time, both minimalist and luxury. Even a toothpaste and brush kit are included with the room. The bed, however, is really firm. Now, I personally like this, but many people won't. A fridge is included, but don't expect a minibar. You'll need to supply your own drinks here. Finally, there's a decent workspace and a large widescreen TV if you need some downtime. And of course, this is an airport hotel, so I wonder what view we're going to get from the window here. Are we going to get lots of planes taking off and landing? Perhaps a few close-ups of aircraft at the gate? Herds of wildebeest crossing the Serengeti, who knows what we're going to see. Let's check it out, hey? Well, it's a little underwhelming. The cost? Well, I hope you're sitting down. A whopping €230 Euro for this, which is really steep. It does include access to the hotel community lounge and breakfast, but this sort of rate is really aimed at people who either literally don't have the right to enter Turkey or for whom it would be expensive and difficult to get a visa. The good news is a small pod hotel is opening soon, and that will definitely be a fair bit cheaper. This airport is fantastic. Just about everything about it is wonderful, but there is one big miss, and that's the fact that it's massive and there is no transit train and not even a moving walkway here on the main concourse. That's not great. This airport is deceptively huge and one of the biggest in the world. It's a single terminal, the longest transfer over two kilometers of walking. That's insane, and no wonder the staff here get about on little scooters. This impacts the minimum connection time here and the reliability of those connections. For a sense of scale, the remote gates at Heathrow Terminal 5 are only about 900 meters away, a trip almost nobody walks if they have a choice. Istanbul's two kilometer walk by comparison takes up most of the runway length at Heathrow. Other mega hubs like Doha have a transit train which makes connections way more pleasant and reliable and not having this facility seems a glaring omission from the airport. Istanbul, please reconsider. If you happen to be flying Turkish Airlines out of Istanbul, be aware there are two lounges here. The first and sort of lower one is the Miles and Smiles Lounge. That's for people who are traveling economy who don't get lounge access other than the fact they've got a frequent flyer card and have the right sort of membership to get in there. The other lounge is the actual Turkish business lounge and that's where we're going now. This is supposedly an amazing lounge and I can't wait to check it out. Thank you. 
This lounge is smaller than the one unified lounge in the old Istanbul Atatürk airport, but that does make sense. The lounge population, as I just explained, has been split in two. It's a really, really nice place actually, and food is at the centre of the whole experience. I love the theming here with the various kitchens and the open concept, meaning you can see all the food being prepared hygienically, and with the reassurance it's fresh. That's a pretty big thing in lounges. Nobody wants a dodgy buffet after all. Now, there are a few gimmicks here. There's a golf driving range, a cinema section where you can watch 12 TVs at once, a model racing track with Istanbul landmarks, and there's also some sort of weird flying machine, which was sadly behind a rope, so I couldn't check it out. Oh well. There are some limited apron views available from this lounge, but most of the seating looks out into the terminal which is no bad view. It is a very bright and airy space during the day. The lounge has a concierge service handling shower facilities and some overnight suites, which are apparently very tricky to get hold of. But one cool feature is the open meeting room booking process. Now I've got this nice quiet space, I think it's time to tell you about how I booked this flight and what it cost me, and a strange thing that you absolutely would not expect to be a barrier in my way to booking this flight. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, an award-winning virtual private network. There's a whole bunch of reasons why Surfshark VPN is an essential part of my travel arsenal. I've used it to leverage lower prices online, I've used it to unblock content overseas to watch stuff that I can't watch outside of the UK, but one thing I never expected to have to use this for is to actually unlock my air miles. I'll show you what I mean. As many of you know, I use Air New Zealand's air points scheme to credit my miles earned from flying. There is just one problem with that though. I literally cannot log into the site to book reward flights because I'm outside New Zealand. You just get batted back in a loop to try again. So of course I use Surfshark to spoof my locations in New Zealand and here we go, I'm in. And don't just take my word for it, by the way. Flyer Talk has plenty of threads on this, and the solution is to use a VPN. Surfshark enabled, I'm able to see the price is just 500 AirPoints dollars, plus a cash component of 39 New Zealand dollars and 60 cents. That's about 20 pounds or just 25 US dollars. Now that's a lot better than the 650 pounds the airline wanted for a one-way cash fare in business class. The other very important reason you want to invest in Surfshark VPN is that it will keep you safe online. And that's really important if you come to a country like Turkey. Turkey's a bit weird with internet. The lounge Wi-Fi makes you log in with your personal flight details, meaning all your browsing is linked back to you. Your passport number, your travel history, your bank details, and everything else the airline knows about you. No thanks. Surfshark takes one click to activate and keeps all of that hidden, which I definitely prefer. So what are you waiting for? Head to surfshark.deals forward slash wing it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. So I'm off, it's gate B17 for today's flight to Amsterdam. And guess what? That is literally the furthest gate there is from the Turkish Airlines business lounge. Now here's a rare spot. That's an Airbus A330 800 Neo. The Dash 800 is a really rare variant of this new aircraft. Oh, and guess who has a flight booked on this soon? Istanbul is a great place to spot all sorts of exotic airlines, from this colourful Uzbekistan Airways A320 to this Iraqi Airways 737, which almost eluded me. This A350 is different to most of the other Turkish A350s. And why is it a secret? 
Well, you might know Turkish's 777 and A330 fleets have an underwhelming business class cabin with little privacy, and that a few years ago they bought 787 Dreamliner and A350 aircraft with a much improved, more private seat, which is still not without its critics, mind you. You see, our A350 wasn't actually ordered by Turkish Airlines. Russian airline Aeroflot was ordering highly spec A350s which were being delivered from 2020 in a bid to revolutionize its long-haul fleet, but with the invasion of Ukraine just over a year ago, those orders couldn't be delivered due to European sanctions against Russia. So Turkish Airlines stepped in with a big checkbook and hey presto, six Aeroflot planes became theirs, complete with a very private, all-closing door, sweet business class. It's by far the best cabin in their fleet, and they say nothing about it at all on their site. It's literally not advertised as something you can experience, and likely never will be, because it wasn't their idea and it's not their brand. The business class Turkish Airlines doesn't talk about. So somewhere on the walk between the lounge and the gate, I actually dropped my boarding pass, so I've got a handy little handwritten one here, but it's time to get on board our Airbus A350 and head to Amsterdam. I'm looking forward to this. Wow. And here we are. This is a rather smart cabin in Aeroflot orange and blue. Seven rows of 28 private suites are in the front cabin here. Centre rows are alternately separated and close together, honeymoon style for couples. I'm in 6A, a true window seat like all even-numbered window seats on board. The odd-numbered seats like this one in row 7 are further from the window. Uh, which one is this? It's strawberry. raspberry with strawberry, fresh orange juice, fresh made lemonade and water. Um, I'll get the lemonade I think. Enjoy Thank your you. drink sir. Thank you. just settled down into this private suite on board this Airbus A350-900 which was originally destined of course for the Russian airline Aeroflot. What a beautiful cabin, it's not terribly spacious but I've got to say it's super private. Now I've got myself a little homemade lemonade here from the cabin crew, let's give that a whirl shall we? Oh, it's so sweet, it's really nice. Cheers anyway. Let's do a full 360, shall we? Isn't this cool to have on a three hour flight? Right, bags on board, let's head to Amsterdam. We've had a punctual departure and turn left and go right around on ourselves to the north and to the west. By the way, if you haven't already, please do leave me a like, drop a comment and please subscribe. You'll be notified of all my latest videos and join a growing community of hundreds of thousands of people like you, enjoying a huge variety of trip reports and reviews. My first order of business is the Wi-Fi. 
And wow, it's free for business class passengers up to one gigabyte, which is a pretty generous allowance. Although the paid for options seem really steep and capped by data, which I personally dislike. I've seen a few airlines install this two tier blind option on the A350 now. What do you think about this? Do you prefer this arrangement to the dimming windows on the Dreamliner? Let me know in the comments. The seat does seem a little weird. It's in Aeroflot colors and not branded like Turkish's fleet in gray and red. I'm not a huge fan of the colors, but the seat is really comfortable with a big footstool. One minor gripe, the buttons are right where you'd rest your arm and I set off the seat recline by accident a few times. Overall, it is a lovely seat, very little to complain about, and everything you'd expect from a current generation top-end business class suite, but with a big emphasis on storage. There's actually a lovely big cupboard here and a large mirror in the console, plus a flat area on top where your bedding could go on a long-haul flight. And not forgetting the large wardrobe area to hang your clothes all very useful on the overnight flights this aircraft does alongside short runs to Amsterdam. Finally, the closing door is quite tall, although there is a bizarre stable door capability on it. Why would you need this? I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me in the comments. Overall, this is a really nice place to spend the long haul flight. Not sure about the colors, but that's okay. Oh, and there are individual air fence too. That's great. Depending on which airline you fly with within Europe, you may or may not get a menu in business class. And some airlines, in fact, on shorter sectors, don't even give you a choice of what's served in business class. But Turkish have a few options today. Let's go check them out. Food on Turkish airlines is usually a highlight, and this is a good menu for a three hour flight. I'm really not a huge fan of tomato or mozzarella, unless they're on pizza, but most people will really enjoy this fresh and simple starter, I think. It's served on the same tray as a garnish salad, cheese, and a lemon tart dessert. The service on board is very fast, it's very efficient. In fact, it almost caught me out, but right now I've got this beautiful looking sea bass in front of me and I think that'll be a bit more of a winner than the starter. I often order fish on board because it's a good way to test the airline. It's easy to get wrong and dry out. Not so here. This was excellent and the best short haul meal I've had for a very long time. I'm always curious to know what you guys think of in-flight entertainment. Are you always transfixed to the tail cams on the Airbus A350? I know I am. I was curious about the flat bed option on the seat. It's wider than it looks, and I think this would be a great place to spend an overnight. There are no space issues for me at all, although the best setting, in my opinion, is definitely reclined with a Turkish coffee and a Turkish delight. Delicious. The actual entertainment is okay. You've seen the tail cams and the English language selection on board is fine, at least. One of the good things to see is a dedicated accessible content section with audio description and subtitles, which more airlines really ought to get on board with. You can also control not only the lighting and hail the attendants from the screen, but also display a symbol saying you'd like to be woken for mealtimes, which is pretty handy. There is, sadly, no loo with a view on today's flight. 
but the lavatory is spotless nonetheless, and I'd expect no less from Turkish Airlines. There are not one, but two coat hooks in here. This is very useful if you're flying long haul and need to change your clothes. The thoughtful touch is complemented by a very nice selection of molten brown toiletries and air freshener. And that's really about it. This short flight is nearly over and we're already on approach to land in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. This special A350, of which Turkish currently have four, comes off the Amsterdam route on March the 25th and now is flying to places like Dubai. Be sure to check the seat maps when you book. If you get seven rows in business class, it's an ex Aeroflot one like this. Eight rows, and I'm afraid it's a standard Turkish one. And bear in mind, airlines swap equipment all the time. It is a bit of a lottery. Don't make your internet privacy a lottery. Don't forget to go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three months extra for free of Surfshark VPN. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.